third thing is that advertisers only pay when a user clicks on their ad, like on their ad. So, like in the other also like you know, um, that also like backs up the the name pay per click. So the only time the advertiser is going to pay for the ad is only when like people click on on those ads. So it's a very straightforward process where you're able to select keywords or search terms that are relevant to the products or services. And then when users search for those keywords on, at the, on, on Google or on the search engine, the, your ad is going to appear alongside the search results. And when people, when these users click on your ads, you get to pay for, for the ad. So it's like when you as an advertiser um, put out an ad, right? You're only going to pay for it when people click on the ads, hence the term like pay per click. So um, what are the benefits of um, Google AdWords? And the first one is that it is a targeted advertising based, it's a targeted advertising that is based on user search intent, right? And this, this just makes it a brilliant tool because you're not just shooting um, shots at different targets you're using you're shooting specific you're shooting specific shots that are obviously in line with what people are searching for so it is something that leverages search intent of users and it is also targeted specifically at these people now the second benefit of people click um or google adwords is that it is it gives you a means to measure your results and also it means to track your return on investment Obviously, every person that is spending money on digital marketing wants to be able to track or wants to be able to measure the results of their marketing budget or their marketing endeavor. So it just makes sense that, you know, this is a benefit for such type of ads or such type of advertisement. Now, the third benefit is that it gives you the ability to control your ad budget and your spending. Obviously, when you are running digital marketing ads, right, you want to, you obviously have a budget that you're currently working with and with pay per click or google adwords you're able to you know control the ad budget where you're not um you're able to still work within your budget and also you know give room for when you want to you know go beyond your budget as well so it gives you much flexibility or you know, more more control rather to 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 um to spend money on your pocket size or on your budget size so it gives you total control to do that. Now, the fourth benefit of pay-per-click or Google AdWords is that it is flexible, right? So it gives you flexibility to adjust, you know, the campaigns based on their performance. So if a campaign is not doing well, it's not performing very well, you can you can still like optimize or change some things so that you know you can you can see um, you can basically change some things even when you execute the campaign. You can change some things to see. Um, how better or how worse it would perform so it gives you the flexibility to adjust these campaigns based on their performance right so that's essentially like the fourth benefit which is obviously like very very important now the second um thing we're going to be talking about is display advertising techniques right so what exactly is display advertising techniques now display advertising is it involves using visual elements like banner ads video ads and very and very interactive ads to promote products or, or services on websites, social media platforms, and other online channels. Um, I'm sure you must have seen this where you're reading a blog or reading a reading just maybe a reading guardians or reading one of these blogs or reading one of these um, publications where you read articles, right? You would obviously see like maybe a, a banner ad when you open the website. You'd see like ads where it's on the banner like of the website so like people are people obviously pay to to display their ads on those banners sometimes with video ads where you are watching you're scrolling on the website and then you just see like a youtube video coming up like just one on one section of the website it just pops up on 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 that website as a video ad people have paid to display their ads on those particular websites so that's exactly what display advertising entails now there are different types of display advertising there's banner ads there's video ads and there's interactive ads now 
banner ads are like static or animated images or static or animated image ads that appear on websites and apps. You'd have seen this, or maybe you download a um, a tool to help you download videos from from different social media platforms. When you want to download a particular video, they would show you. They would obviously like show you an ad first before you're able to download the video. So they're they're basically banner ads are like static or animated images or animated image ads that appear on your website on your or your mobile apps. You must have interacted with one of these ads if you are a if you're an avid user of um websites or you you're you're in the digital era so there's no way that you will not have come across these ads or this type of um display advertising now the second one is video ads now video ads are you know short video clips that play before or during after before during or after video content now a good example of this is youtube where you're watching youtube and you know there's an ad that plays before the video that you're watching or an ad that plays after the video of what you're watching or even during the video of what you're watching so these are examples of um video ads where advertisers pay money to advertise their um their their their, their content to to people through video ads and youtube is just the best example to use to explain that The one we'll be talking about today is interactive ads. Now, these ads, you know, are ads that allow users to engage with them, such as playable ads or expandable ads. Now, I talked about um, ads on different websites and um, how they work, right? So, these interactive ads are basically ads that, you know, when you click them, they are able to, you are able to interact with the ads, basically. Maybe it's a YouTube video that is about a product, right? You are able to either rewatch the video or or pause the ad or even skip it in general, right? So these are just ads that are able to interact interact with sorry interact with. It could be videos. Most times it's usually videos because videos you know have more um, features to interact with, like have more features for you to interact with. So um, those are examples of um, interactive ads. Now. Display advertising strategies are things that we should obviously like, you know, prioritize if we're going to be leveraging display advertising um, techniques, right? Or like, yeah, if we're going to take advantage of display advertising, we need to learn about display advertising strategies. So the first strategy is target audience. Now, you need to be able to identify the specific audience you want to reach based on their demographics, based on their interest, based on their online behavior as well. Demographics just has to do with like their age, um, maybe their career path, where they are located, things like that. Those are things that you should know about your target audience before you, you know, run targeted ads at them. The second thing that you, the second strategy you need to know or need to leverage is like the ad placement. You need to choose. You need to choose like the relevant websites or apps or social media platforms where your target audience is likely to see your ads right so this this is something that we obviously should not you know take for granted because if we're going to be advertising to people we want to make sure that we are advertising in places where they are likely to see these ads right so it should be if your target audience is not going to be on social media platforms you should be placing your advertisement on websites right so if you just need to identify your target audience and understand them and know know where they spend most of their time, you're able to do this through research and also through observation. Now, the second or the third strategy is the ad design. Now you have to obviously create eye-catching and engaging ads that capture attention and convey your message effectively. This is as straightforward as it sounds. Your messaging has to be clear, concise, and also captivating because you you people have, you know, um, how do I put it now? People have a, a low tolerance for advertisement. So you need to make sure that your own ads are eye-catching because they have to just be compelling and they're also concise. They have to be short, straightforward, and, you know, contain all the necessary information that they, they should know about. And it should also like 
you know, capture the attention with your ads, making sure that your ads capture the attention and they convey your message um, effectively. Now, the fourth strategy is the measurement of the ad, which is ad measurement. Now, you want to be able to track the ad performance and make adjustments to optimize the result. Obviously, when you run an ad and you see the performance of the ad, you are able to draw inference or draw insight from the data that you have from the result of that um, from the result of that ad that you put out. So, the the insights that you get is going to give you you know the next call to action of what you can optimize or what you can change or what you can tweak to make it perform better or to or if you see that the ad even performed well, you can see what is working well and see how you can even double down on that. Now, what are the key elements of search engine um, marketing reports? Now, the first one is campaign overview. Now, campaign overview are basically a summary of the campaign objectives, um, the target audience, and the budget. <laughs> it's as straightforward as it sounds, obviously. So you need to have like a summary of the, the objectives of the campaign. What is the objective of the campaign? Is it to generate leads? Is it to generate web traffic? Is it to increase brand awareness? Is it to increase social media following? All of these things are things that you would consider before you even set out to, to create a digital marketing campaign. You know, so you need to obviously set the objectives down so that when you even commence the digital marketing campaign, you can now see or you can you can what you're going to be doing is going to be inconsistent with the objectives that you have. And the objectives that you have would also contain you know your target audience and also contain your budget as well so your target audience is basically the people that you are trying to reach and you know your budget is especially essentially the money that you're trying to spend on the campaign now the performance metrics performance metrics are essentially um the parameters that you use to measure the performance of a marketing endeavor a, a marketing ad now performance metrics could be data on the clicks um, the impressions, that is how many people came across the, the content of the ads, the conversions, that is how many people made, you know, how many people took a call to action to to convert that, um, like how many people, you know, maybe took action on that ad, that is what conversion is, and cost per click as well, you know, how much it would cost, how much it costs you to, to, how much it costs you when people, click that ad. So you remember I talked about in this class where I talked about pay-per-click advertising where you only pay when people click the ads, right? So these are things that would influence your um, next marketing campaign or your current marketing campaign where you're able to see the impressions of how many people saw it, the conversions of how many people took action on it, and you know the cost per click where you're able to see um, how much you spent when people click um, your ads as well. So um, the third element of search engine um, marketing reports is trend analysis. Now, this is obviously like a comparison of performance over time to identify trends and to identify patterns. So you're able to compare and you know contrast what is doing well. You're able to identify the trends as well to see, okay, is this what is working now? And how you can leverage that trend to make sure that you know, your own ads perform better as well. So trend analysis is like an element of your search engine marketing reports. Now, recommendations. Now, these are essentially suggestions for improving your campaign performance based on data insights. Now, the idea of search engine marketing reports is that when you run a digital marketing ad or you run a digital marketing campaign, all of these things, these four things are things that you have to include in your reports because Obviously, when you are a digital marketer or you are investing in digital marketing for your business, you need to be able to generate reports to see um, the results from that digital marketing campaign. So all of these four elements are things that will be included in your, your, your marketing reports. So you're able to you know, see what is working and also um, see what you can optimize from what worked when you are going to do your next digital marketing campaign. So you just have to, it's just a form of documentation for digital marketers, right? So all of these elements are things that you would have to do in your documentation or your report writing process. Okay, this, this is essentially the end of the class. So 
um i hope that everyone has been able to get like a good amount of the things that we talked about today so that you can improve your digital marketing um, skills and your digital marketing endeavors and um, i wish you guys good luck and i hope that you know all of these things that we talked about today are things that you know come in handy when you are running your own digital marketing campaigns in your organization or your business all right that's the end of today's class thank you so much for your time and i'll see you in the next one Thank you.